Hi friends, welcome back to your practice. Today's practice, I'll invite you to take a look at your strength around your hips, as well as mobilizing this area in a couple of different options. So we'll be doing that supine on our back in a seat, and then there'll also be an option if you'd like to invert and use some of that hip mobility in an inversion. So if you do want to do that, be near a wall and have a little space left to write on the wall, maybe moving paintings or a plant or a chair. So you have a pretty big wall space behind you. And if you don't want to invert, don't worry. I'll give you another option where you can do this um, using a little more core engagement, supine. So all levels of engagement and energy levels are always welcome. And you're invited to close your eyes if you like and come into this idea of big sky mind. You might notice thoughts, emotions, sensations, all these things, moving schedules <laughs> in your field of awareness. And they can stay there, they can be there. Maybe some are pleasurable to grasp onto, maybe some you want to really push away. And without getting into the stories of all those things, can you pull back a little bit and rest into the space that's behind all of that, like the big field of awareness that's like the big atmosphere where all of these weather patterns are coming through. Allow them to be there and see if you can rest back from them or pan out from them a little. Finding this big picture awareness, a little wider, a little less in focus on one thing, a little broader, maybe even like a fuzzy peripheral focus. And if you like to make some sound, you might listen to this part, but I'll lead you through a chant that I learned from T.S. Little. And this chant, the meaning of it is, I am the open spaciousness of the mind. And the chant is, Chit Ananda Rupa Shivo Hum Shivo Hum. So if you like to have your hands in your lap or maybe a gesture of hands together. And I'll say it once and then we'll say it together two times if you like. Chit Ananda Rupa Shivo Ham Shivo Ham Chit Ananda Rupa Shivo Ham Shivo Ham Chit Ananda Rupa Shivo Ham Shivo Ham Resting into that open spaciousness, that blue sky mind for a moment. And then we'll come off of the prop if you're sitting on it. <clears throat> and we're going to land on our, our back. So we'll roll down onto our back, taking the hands onto the lower abdomen and stretch out through the legs. You can reach your heels away. See if you can bring your low back a little closer to the ground. Maybe your shoulders can soften a little towards the ground. And then we'll take our right knee in towards our chest. And you're always welcome to hold on behind the right leg or with a prop and reach that up towards straight. And take a few moments there. It might be a little away from you. It might be a little bit bent. Take a breath in and a breath out. Maybe feeling evenness through the two sides of your pelvis, left to right. And then you can point your toe and flex your heel. Let's do that a few times. Point and flex. And can you relax your left foot? I know they kind of want to move together. Can you uncouple the left foot from the right and put all your awareness into this energy in your right ankle with this dorsiflexion and plantar flexion and relax your left foot. I know it's hard. And then we'll let that right leg come all the way down, reestablish, lower back a little closer down to the floor, shoulders relaxed, leg bones dropped, and then left leg can come up. You can always hold on if you need to, or without the use of your hands, take a couple breaths into that left leg being up, might be a little away from you. <sighs> 
see what you're doing with your right foot <laughs> and then you can point and flex and see if you can relax your right foot and keep all that energy in your left ankle. Point and flex. Coming into your own breath. Let's do that for a couple more beats. Feeling Maybe feeling that evenness through the two sides of your pelvis and then letting that right leg come down, left leg come down. Right leg comes back up, you can hold on again. And let's this time slide it across the body. So your leg could be a bit bent. Let's start, slide it across the body till you roll onto the outer left edge of your foot. And then reach it down and away from you till your left heel is back on the ground, both sides of the pelvis on the ground. And then reach it out to the side. You could use your hand for support. Keep the left side of your pelvis grounded as your right leg moves to the right and then reach it all the way back into the center. And we'll do one more circle going the other direction. Big helicopter of the leg. So right leg out to the side. See if you can stay plugged in through both sides of your hips all the way down so both heels center down to the ground. Then start to take it across and roll onto your outer left hip. Reach that leg away from you so you're in a bit of a twist. And then all the way back up and lower that right leg down to the floor. Re-establish that grounding through the pelvis, the chest and head, and left leg can come up. Always welcome to use your hand support. Roll onto your outer right hip, take that leg across. Feeling any stretch sensations there, you can roll out into a twist. Sweep it down so both sides of the pelvis are grounded again. Sweep it away from you, maybe hold onto it and then back to center. And my right foot's doing funny things, so I'm gonna to try to leave it out of it. Left leg out to the side, all the way down. Across, roll onto the right hip, and then all the way back up to center, and then release that leg, your breath in. Your breath out, grab on behind your knees, rock and roll a little on your spine. <laughs> Backwards and forwards until you come up to a seat. And I'm gonna turn on my mat here, to come into this 90-90, so we're gonna come side to side. You can always take your hands back behind you to work with this. So let's shift our hips side to side, and you might be doing a little butt walk forwards, that's fine, <laughs> with about a 90 degree angle between the lower and upper leg. If that's bugging your knees, you can always pull it in a little bit more, and you can always use your hands behind you. So let's let our knees fall to the right, and check out how it feels in your left hip. If it's tender or uncomfortable, it feels unsafe, come on up. And always you can just see how much of an edge of sensation you want to work with today. Okay, so this internal rotation in this top left hip might feel a little strange at first because it's a position that many of us don't do that much. And it's also a range of motion that we tend to lose when our hips get arthritic and when we get a little older. So you can come into that edge of sensation that works for you. Then let's roll that left hip forwards and back down. Roll it forwards and back down. And maybe your hip is touching, maybe it's not. It might be different on both sides. Use your breath with this. Okay, and now we're gonna take our sternum over our right shin, the middle of the shin. So come down and really light touch of your fingertips out to the sides. You could even do this without your fingertips pressing on the floor and it'll be a little more active. <clears throat> so find yourself reaching your belly button over that right shin and you could again be hands free here. So let's try a couple of things. Let's press our leg into the floor. So it's like I'm pressing my ankle and knee into the floor so strongly I want to lift my hips off off the floor. And they might not lift, they might actually if you want to try that. Um, but press. Let's take a breath in with that press and take a breath out. Then let's pull up, like you wanna pull the knee and the ankle up towards your chest. And notice um, maybe some tension or some work in the front of the hip. And I have Carrie Awerko to really thank for these beautiful movements of strength in the hip. So pull, pull up for your breath in. I'm gonna use some pressure here with my fingertips and your breath out. Okay, and then we'll come up and we'll see how it feels to actually lift the leg off the floor, a little or a lot. You can lean back and use your fingertips or not. 
and then place that foot down and see if you can lift or lighten your left ankle off the floor or maybe your whole knee and ankle off the floor. You'll lean a little forwards in that, lower down and we'll alternate side to side. So it might not come up, you might just be imagining, not just, you might be imagining that it's lifting or you might actually be lifting it. So we'll go side to side and then we'll add a little breath into this. So we'll go right leg up or lighten and then down and left leg up or lighten and then inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and then come back up to center and notice that left hip's descent towards the floor if it's changed any amount. And then we'll come up and over to the other side. So now we're finding that left leg in external rotation, right leg in internal. And we'll just check out that top hip again. So roll it forwards, glute engages, roll it down towards the floor. Roll it forwards, down towards the floor. Shift forwards and down. And then we're going to aim our left, our sternum over the middle of our left shin. And you can do this without your hands or not. Now let's push the shin down into the floor, the outer shin. Push, almost like you want to lift your hips up off the floor for your breath in and your breath out. And now let's pull the shin towards us. So I'm going to use that pressure of my fingertips to get that lightning to happen. Pull it towards the torso for a breath in and a breath out. Now coming up and we'll see if we can lighten the feeling of that outer shin on the ground or actually lift it up. Always feel free to use your hands. Lower it down and then lighten either the right ankle or the right knee right up off the floor. You're gonna shift your torso a little left for that and lower it down. Again, going side to side, so left up, right, either the ankle or the knee or a feeling of lightening. So it doesn't have to be a lift. So shifting forwards and back. Now if you want, we'll add in a little breath to this. So we'll shift down, lift the back, internally rotated knee and ankle, and then inhale, lift the left shin towards us. Exhale, lift up the back leg. Inhale, lift up the front leg. For three, two, and one. And then coming up and checking out that right hip coming towards the ground or a little more maybe. And now let's keep, open up the left leg a little. And it's like there's a beach ball under your left knee and you're push squishing it down into the ground. So squish down through there and then start to pick up the right knee and only move it so far out to the side that you're still squishing that beach ball down with the left foot. And then open up into a wide knee position. And you can use your hands back behind you or not. And imagine that there's two beach balls there and you're squishing them down to the ground with that outer knee pushing down. For your breath in and out. Feel free to lean back and have your hands back behind you. And then we'll draw the knees in, cross at the ankles, round forwards, breath in and out. And we'll shift forwards to our hands and our knees, warming up the wrists. Make sure you have one block near you if you have a foam block. So shifting forwards and back with straight arms, dropping into your breath, maybe letting your eyes soften a bit. You can think about that big mind, that peripheral focus. Feeling your whole body rather than one pinpoint place perhaps. Take your hands out to the sides, shift side to side. See if you can feel your whole body engaged in the movement from tips of toes, tips of fingers, top of the head, base of the pelvis. And you can turn your fingers all the way in and again shift forwards and back. Familiar movement, notice what's new. You might walk your knees in, tuck your toes, shift back, round your upper back, peel the heel of your hand off, bend your elbows. Breath in and out. 
shake out through your hands. Tuck toes, reach up and back into your downward facing dog, pedal out your feet. And as you're ready, right leg up into the air. Bend the knee and open the right knee up, open the right hip on top of the left a little, and aim your belly button down towards the floor and drive back through your hips to clear out your lower spine. And you can make a big circle with that knee, exploring range in your hip, sensation in your hips, switch direction. Now if you like, you can make that circle again, opposite direction, or stretch out through your leg and make the circle with a straighter leg one direction. And then the other three-legged dog here. Bring your right foot underneath your right wrist, come up onto your fingertips and wiggle your back heel back. Shift forwards and back. Maybe feeling into your back Achilles, base of the calf, right in towards the heel. And then we'll roll over our left toes and drop the knee towards the floor. You might want a blanket for these variations. So I'm gonna take the blanket underneath the left knee and sink in here. And then start to climb up onto the right knee. And so I'm more upright in this lunge. I'm at, instead of sinking forwards, I'm gonna shift back a little so that I feel my low back isn't so arched, but lifted as I push down into the foundation. So you might stay here. You might lean a little forwards, bend the back leg, and reach for it with your left hand, okay? And you might hold the heel, you might hold the outer ankle, and then see again if you can boost the low back up. So that might mean shifting your hips back a little, your breath in. You could also be reaching with a little bend in your back leg. Your breath out. And then we'll switch. So releasing that leg down, you can shift a little forwards and back, easing up tension. And then take your left hand across to your outer right knee, look over your right shoulder, and you might reach your right arm back towards your left ankle or shift a little forwards and bend your left knee and hold onto your ankle. And then again, puff open your kidney area. Hips might move back a little bit, lifting up out of your low back for your breath in, your breath out. And by no means do you have to grab your ankle. You could be twisting without that lift of the ankle and then coming back forwards. And let's shift a little forwards and back. And then here's the last one. We'll come up a little. And if you like, take a foam block. You could do corker wood, but it'll be a little harder. Place it on the base of your hamstring and grab it with your heel. Okay, watch out for the calf cramp. <laughs> and then you might check out if you could lift up out of your low back. Right, so here you might interlock your fingers or take your arms up, your breath in, your breath out. Come on down, I'm getting a calf cramp or a hamstring cramp. And then come on down and then I'm gonna again, ease out of that, shift forwards and back. Okay, step back into a downward facing dog, pedal it out. Option to stay in downward facing dog, pedaling it out or shift to a plank. Shoulders lifted lower to chaturanga or to the floor, upward dog or your cobra. And your downward facing dog, left leg up into the air, bend the knee, open the hip. Make those big circles, aiming your belly button towards the floor and you can always pop up onto your right toes one way and then the other. If you like, open up the lever and make it longer of your leg. One circle one way with a straighter leg and then the other way. Watching which elbow wants to bend. Bring that left foot in underneath the left wrist. Wiggle that back heel back, shifting forwards and back. I'm gonna enjoy having my blanket there for these transitions. Take the right knee down to the floor, untuck the back toes and you can shift forwards and back. Feeling the difference now for stretching that front hamstring as opposed to those strength work you were doing before. Giving all this beautiful information to the back of the legs. 
And now we can shift forwards and start to come up, giving attention to that wide and lifted back body. Beautiful. So taking your breath in there, your breath out. Now you can stay with this and start to open twist towards your right leg. You can bend that back leg, make a movement back to hold onto the ankle or the outer ankle or the inner foot, and then lift your back ribs up, your kidneys up, minimizing lower back bend, and maybe maximizing stretch sensation in the front of the right leg. Can come out of that and feel free to shift forwards and back. Easing up tension there. And then we'll come up and come across. Right hand across, so you might open up into a twist, filling up your low back, shifting the hips back a little bit. You might bend that back leg a little, reach or take a hold of the foot and breathe in there. Breathe in and out. Breathing into the back maybe. Maybe shifting the left hip down. And then coming out of that and shifting a little forwards and back. And then you can shift back forwards and maybe if you want to grab the, the block, <clears throat> take it there and seal the block in with a little bit of work. Lift the back ribs, maybe interlock. Lift all the way up, your breath in and out. And then releasing that, oh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> and shifting forwards and back. And we'll come up and back into our downward facing dog, pedal out through the feet. Option here to continue to pedal or to shift forwards to a plank, maybe a knee plank. Lower to chaturanga or the floor. Roll into upward dog or a cobra. And up and back to your downward facing dog. Step or hop to the top of the mat. Lengthen out and fold. All the way up. And release your arms. Big mind. Peripheral vision. Exhale. Arms up. Fold in. Lengthen out, step or hop back, downward facing dog. Take a breath in, take a breath out. Right leg up into three legged dog, bend the knee, open the hip. Circle one way, circle the other way. Either stay with that or circle the other way again, straighter leg. Circle the other way again, straighter leg, three-legged dog, right foot towards the right wrist, wiggle the back knee back, pulse forwards and back, hands underneath the shoulders. Drop down through the left knee. This time we're going to spin our left shin all the way around to face the right side of the mat so we come up towards a gate shape with the foot and the knee pointing out to the side. Start to sink into that, lowering the left inner leg as much as you like. Come on up. You can slice your right arm down the inner leg, left arm up, out, and over for your side stretch. Breath in and out. Maybe up and over, either hovering for a side stretch on the other side or fingertips to the floor, maybe straightening your right leg out finding more of a stargazer shape, your breath in. It's a little more challenging with a hover. Your breath out, all the way up from here. Now you're welcome to bend your back leg, catch the block between your heel and your upper hamstring. And then if you like, side bend again, over to the right, breath in, breath out. And then a little side bend over to the other side. Breath in. There goes my block. <laughs> Breath out. Oh. And then you can release the block. Come on back up. Spin yourself towards your right leg. Shift forwards and back, easing out of that. Hamstring work in the back leg. Step it back into downward facing dog. Pedal it out. Roll to plank. 
lower, upward dog or cobra, downward facing dog. Left leg up into the air, bend the knee, open the hip, circle one way, circle the other. Maybe circle the one way again with the leg straighter and the other with the leg straighter. Three-legged dog, left foot towards the left wrist and start to shift forwards and back. Lower your right knee down towards the floor. Now we're gonna spin that right shin all the way to the left side of the mat. Make sure your knee's on the mat and start to shift that right inner leg towards the floor. Maintaining strength front, back, and sides. Connection to the tube of your torso. And then you can take your left hand down the left inner leg. Right arm up out and over for your side stretch. All the way up and either hover the right fingertips to the floor or place them down for your breath in and out. All the way back up to center where you might choose to catch that block in between your heel and your buttock, low buttock. Ooh, I'll catch your balance. Side stretch for a breath in and out. And side stretch the other direction. Ooh, for a breath in and out. Doesn't have to be tidy. Come on up. Release that block if it hasn't fallen out already. Turn yourself to the front, shift forwards and back. Easing into those hips. Hands down, step back, downward facing dog. You might roll to plank or knee plank, lower your up dog or your cobra. And press into your hands, ripple back to your downward facing dog. Come on through to take your knees down on the ground. Walk your hands forwards. Shift your hips over top of your knees. Press your hands down and forwards. And take your forehead or some of you, maybe your chin to the ground. And then let your shoulders, your armpits, drop as much as is okay for you, is comfortable for you. And then draw your low front ribs in towards the belly button. Like you're filling the back lungs up towards the ceiling minimizing that mid-back back arch. And take some breaths here as you press your arms towards straight. One. Pressing your hands down, pressing them forwards. Two. And three. Lifting chest, walking hands back underneath the shoulders. Press back into your downward facing dog for a breath. And then coming down to your knees. So moving to the wall, let's check out some of our hip work against the wall. So the first one is going to be taking your left foot to your wall or floorboard. Push the left foot into the floorboard, push towards straight, and let the right leg come up into the air. So you have some contact with the left toes, left ball of the big toe against the floorboard or the wall, evenness of weight on your two sides of your pelvis. We're gonna do those big hip circles, but instead of rolling onto the left hip this time, we'll keep the pelvis fairly grounded left to right the whole time. So you can try those big hip circles. Your knee might be a little bit bent. You might use your breath one way and then the other and switching sides. So you might scoot your buttocks into the wall, push, and then you can explore those hip circles like you're drawing a big circle on the ceiling with the two sides of your hips fairly grounded with your breath. Okay, that's option number one to play with. Option number two, is using your hands into the wall. So finding your fingertips 
against the wall. I'm going to use my, um, you can work them a little bit up the wall. Your fingertips don't have to be on the wall. And then press towards straight arms where you have contact with your low back ribs on the ground. Push and connect those front ribs in and the back ribs on the ground. Then you can take your right leg up and make those circles, seeing if you can maintain contact with your back ribs to the ground. This one is really interesting for your hand balance. So you can switch sides and play with those circles and maintaining that low rib contact all the way through the circles. You can totally do this with a bent leg. That's the option number two. I think I'm adding an option here. Next option is to take your handstand against the wall. So turning yourself and giving it a big kick with your comfortable leg so that you come up against the wall. Heels are gonna be against the wall for this one. Try to fill up your mid back as best you can. Right knee in, let's do it bent first and then make a big circle with your right knee. Now you can always make that lever longer and make a big circle with your leg. Let's try the other side knee in, circle with the bent knee, and then circle with a straighter leg and see if you can minimize back bend in your shape, filling up those back ribs. Press towards straight with your arms and lower down. That one's really interesting. So now, this one, if you have a handstand practice, you can try taking your belly to the wall in a handstand. You might want to watch this one first and then you can join in. So hands press, walk up the wall. So you're in that L position, handstand, and then start to walk your feet up the wall and then wheelbarrow walk your hands so that you come a little closer to the wall and you can press your arms towards straight. So we're gonna come a little further away than you think at first, maybe a tiny bit of a pike through the body and then take the left leg out to the side, sweep it through, watch for T, <laughs> take it across and then sweep it back and up into your handstand. Other side across, sweep across woo, and then back and across and up. To come out of this, try not to buckle through your back, wheelbarrow walk out and then step one foot down and then the other and you can dangle there and come up as you're ready. So you might want to pause the video and work with one of those options <laughs> and you can always come back to these options. And then as you're ready, come to the top of the mat and inhale, circle your arms up. Exhale and fold. Lengthen out. Step or hop back to your downward facing dog. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Bend your knees and come on through to a seat. You might want one of your blocks for this. I'll show you this way. Left leg out, right foot. You're welcome to take it up onto a block. Now with this right foot, see if you can push the ball of your right big toe forwards. Maintain that pressure. And then you can take your right elbow into the arch of your right foot or you can also hold onto your foot to twist to the left. You can put your elbow there if you want. Maybe make a fist with your bottom hand, push down onto it with your top left hand and spiral around to your left. See if you can maintain the ball of your right big toe pushing forwards as you try to take your right knee a little closer to the floor. Your breath in, your breath out. Okay, you can stay here and fold right through the middle, seeing how that feels, or you're welcome to take underneath your ankle, pull the foot towards the groin, and maybe aim your half lotus leg towards the block. You can hire the block or take it out completely. You might fold forwards. Some of you might come around and clasp your toe or use a proper strap for that and fold forwards over your left leg. Breath in and out. 
come on up from that. Before we do the other side, feel welcome to come into a tabletop. Your fingers might turn out to the sides or in towards your hips. Lift and broaden your chest. Squeeze your elbows together a fraction. Lift your hips, maybe let your head softly go back. Breath in. And out. Hips lower down as you're ready. We'll switch sides. Right leg forwards, left leg might come onto that prop. Knee goes down, left big toe mound reaches towards the right, so forwards. Take a moment there. Either hold onto the foot and twist, or elbow to the arch of the foot. Make a fist with your bottom hand. Press down onto it with your top right hand. Breath in. Breath out. Is your right big toe mound trying to do the same thing as your left big toe mound? Mine is. <laughs> Come on up. You're welcome to fold through the middle. Take the block out if you need, or hold under your left ankle. Sweep that foot towards the groin, and you might place that knee gently on a block. Or you might take it out completely and aim the half lotus leg towards the floor. Welcome to fold forwards any amount here, or make a circle with your left hand to find a bind or use a prop there, and fold forwards over your right inner leg. Breath in, and out. Come on up to center, release that, your tabletop. Hands back behind, choose the rotation of your wrists that you like. Lift chest, squeeze elbows a little together. Lift the hips, maybe let the head fall back. Your breath in and out. Hips down, feet forwards, roll on down as you're ready back to the floor. Press your feet down, lift your hips for a bridge shape. Find the arm position that works for you. You could take your shoulders more underneath you, interlock your hands, hold your hips. Maybe for some, flip your fingers, come up onto the top of the head. Maybe you stay there and come back down or arching your upper back more, minimizing that low back curve, and pressing up towards your wheel. Could shift a little forwards and back for one, two, and three. Exhale, tuck your chin, squeeze your elbows together to find your way down, draw your knees in towards your chest. Feet wide on the mat, let your knees fall to one side and let your knees fall to the other side. When your knees are over to the right, can curl up and see if you can bring your left knee into your chest Lean a little towards your right side and take your left foot into a hero shape. Maybe you pull that ankle and squeeze it up towards your outer hip any amount and reach your knee away from you. You could also be continuing to hold on to the top of the foot. Maybe you roll back so that both hips are evenly grounded. Breath in. Breath out. Lean a little right to take that foot out. Windshield wipe a little side to side. Gentle movements in the knees. Come over to the left. Maybe for some you stay there or you bring your right knee in, hold the ankle, rotate that into a hero's shape. Could hold onto the foot, pull the foot a little more towards the outer hip. And maybe you roll back onto both sides of the pelvis grounding. Your breath in. And out, lean left, little windshield wiper through the two sides. Making any movements here that might support you to find a final resting form. Could be a hug through the center. Maybe there's an inversion you'd still like to explore or a hip stretch or twist. Take your time to land. You might take a breath in, exhale it out completely. You might roll your head side to side if you're in a seat. 
might look over one shoulder and then the other. As you come into the center, see if you can settle into that big sky mind. Any amount, whatever's come up from the practice swirling around. Don't have to detach from it. Might be important. But allowing it to be the weather and settling into that there's much more to you. A wide, vast, open awareness. Connection to spaciousness. Maybe stillness or some quiet. Now you might be in a seat, you might be resting on your back. I'd love to close this practice with our chant, Chit Ananda Rupa, Shivo Hum Shivo Hum. I'm the open spaciousness of the mind. You might rest and listen or join in. Might come to a seat for this. Find a hand gesture that works. Chit Ananda Rupa Shivo Ham Shivo Ham Chit Ananda Rupa Shivo Ham Shivo Ham Chit Ananda Rupa Shivo Ham Shivo Ham Thank you for being here with me today. May of peace.